Hello there and welcome back. In today's episode we're going to be continuing this painting that you're observing here and we're going to be using only water mixable oil paints to do this. So in the last episode, so in yesterday's episode, uh, we started off the, the big shapes and then we got into the features, we got into the eyes and the nose. So today we're going to be starting off with the mouth. So we're going to mix up a little uh, color value web for the mouth and that's just the way that I approach things these days uh, kind of in a little more organized fashion just to move a little faster so in the middle tones I'm using the uh, burnt sienna the cadmium orange and then in the lighter tones it's going to be the the mixing white and the alizarin crimson and that's pretty much it for the color combinations for the mouth, as you see in the photo reference of our model Morgan there to the top left corner of your screen, of which I'll keep for the duration of the painting footage so you can follow along with me. Now, as you can tell in the photo reference, the light is a little bit cooler. It's a little bit um, more compressed. And that is because um, I took this photo reference under natural light, a window light. So the colors aren't going to be that uh, bright. They're not going to be that uh, kind of in your face. So that's why um, I made those combinations a little less saturated with the burnt sienna and the, um, the mixing white just to cool off some of the heat of the warmer colors. And what I'm doing is I'm making the side plane of the orbicularis oris a little bit darker. And I am working wet on wet. And the topic of yesterday's episode and today's episode is the, uh, the usability of water mixable oil paints for portrait painting, in particular Alla Prima portrait painting, which simply means just painting wet on wet. So the thing about water mixable oil paints, like I was uh, saying in yesterday's episode, is that water mixable oil paints I find are really really useful for Alla Prima for wet on wet and I'm going to be speaking specifically about uh, the brands that I'm using so I'm using mostly Winsor and Newton water mixable with the exception of my Alizarin Crimson and my Burnt Sienna which are Holbein's um, I think it's called Aqua Duo or something like that and if you're curious as to exactly what materials I'm using uh, you can always feel free to scroll down to the description box down below and all of that will be typed up for you. So um, we painted in the Filtrum first. The Filtrum is that uh, teardrop looking shape uh, just beneath the root of the nose. So Filtrum first just to give me the top middle portion of the mouth. And this is just um, because uh, to be frank, the mouth is one of the easiest things to move, and it's much easier to paint than the nose or than the eyes. Now, the eyes are not finished, the nose are not finished. So, in terms of technique, uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to be putting in the features, just like you're seeing here, with just a couple values, but the majority of today's footage is actually going to be on developing the mouth in a wet on wet style. So notice how we're putting in those lighter warmer values uh, just basically taking off the color value web that we <coughs> excuse me that we mixed up on the uh, the palette. So we're just taking from that um, we're pushing the side a little bit darker with the um, with the burnt sienna and a lizard and crimson. I will admit it's a little bit warmer than I uh, ultimately want it to go. So now we're putting in a little more ultramarine blue just to put in a darker accent. And so just like in yesterday's episode, I was kind of relating or comparing uh, the water mixables to um, traditional oil paints. But in this sense, um, I think I'd be handling the traditional oil paints just the same, uh, putting the wet on wet applications of the brush strokes. Now, with the water mixables, if you use less water, 
you can blend just like you would with traditional oil paints. And by blending, I just mean uh, softening an edge, such as that edge right there. So I, I tend to keep the mouth, or I tend to try and keep the mouth, especially around the corners of the mouth, much softer in terms of their edge uh, and sharper towards the top middle, towards the filtrum. And that's just to not, I don't know, draw too much attention towards the corner of the mouth, rather uh, towards the center of the mouth. And I think that's just down to uh, my personal preference. And now we're gonna have a lighter plane. So that's gonna be the side plane of the mouth, but the area most facing the light, the light is coming from the corner. As you can tell in the photo reference. Now, um, I will say, like I mentioned yesterday, that water mixable oils, at least for the brands that I mentioned, are not as saturated. They're not as uh, bright, or at least they don't feel as bright. But remember, that's not necessarily a bad thing because. When we're painting a portrait, and I'm talking about for portrait painting in particular, when we're painting a portrait, rarely are we going to have areas as bright and as saturated. Now, there will be one exception here. If you see the photo reference, our model, uh, her hair, the back of her hair is actually receiving a warm light. And that's because she was uh, sitting for me for this picture right in front of the model setup that the... Uh, painting group had her posed in. So I will put that color in and show you how I put in that color of that warm backlight. So we'll see how we'll tackle that later. So now just putting in a few more uh, plane changes for the bottom of the chin. And you wanna see how everything relates. Notice how earlier I was making a, a vertical uh, kind of gesture, meaning moving the brush up and down vertically. To compare the mouth to the nose. I do think that the angle of the mouth is a little exaggerated at this point, but um, you know, after this, it's pretty much just repetition. So I will just be moving the shapes, uh, pushing and pulling them a little by little to get them to a much more precise stage. But I don't really want to make it as, I don't want to have the aesthetic of the photograph which is a really delicate balance to have when you're painting portraits, especially uh, for especially if you're a beginner. I think the tendency is going to be to want to emulate the photograph, trying to make it, you know, exactly like the photograph. Um, and that's okay, but that's not really what I'm after. I'm trying to, um, you know, make it look like a painting, like... I'm not trying to foot. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to force any kind of style onto the painting. It's just that uh, I'm looking at the shapes and I'm observing them, and I'm using comparative measuring, meaning I'm just I'm not you know taking out a caliper or tracing anything. Pretty much just by eye, and you can get really precise just using your eye just using comparative measurement, but I'm not going to try to force too much of a photographic touch to the painting because that's just not my aesthetic. And if that's your aesthetic, then that's perfectly fine. And so now just a few more little uh, touches to the mouse, and then we're going to uh, move on to the rendering stage. A little more light on the upper lip. And when we get to the uh, the rendering stage, you'll notice that it'll be mostly about edge. So we're actually kind of already doing that here by sharpening the, the top of the mouth. So edge is very important. And it's going to be the next thing to talk about uh, with the water mixable oil paints because it does handle very similar to traditional. So what you see there is a uh, clean synthetic brush and you see how I'm able to soften an edge. And that's because there's more paint than water. So softening again. 
We will add in some half tones now here and there and probably move some of the features around slightly, you know, like shrink the size of the eyes because the eyes are still kind of big, um, still lacking some information. So the, uh, the finessing of the portrait, so to speak, is really going to be down to very subtle value transitions. And remember value just, or sorry, uh, subtle just means how close can you get the values to one another without losing their uh, differentiation from one another. And I will say it's particularly more difficult to do this uh, when you're painting someone that's that's young, that's as young as our model here. So that does create much more subtlety, whereas if we're painting someone much older uh, with a lot of, uh, you know, hills and valleys and facets on their, uh, on their, st on the structures of their face, it, it's actually, I think, much easier on us to paint uh, folks that are, um, let's just say, have much more texture. So to achieve the subtlety here with the water mixables, it's going to actually be the exact same as I would be uh, with the traditional oil paints. So I'm going to be adding some paint in, such as this plane here. And when I want the edge to be softer, I use less water, which means that the paint will be kind of blending, so uh, creating a very soft edge, almost like an airbrushed edge. And that's what you're seeing right there. I just have to uh, raise the eyelid back up. But that's essentially what you're seeing um, in this stage of the rendering. Now, I'd say that the biggest difference with the water mixable is that you can do something like this. So we're able to put in a very defined line and have it stick almost like it's a, like it's magnetic. So in a sense for me uh, I think it was even easier for me to to render in this portrait working out of prima than it would probably have been um, you know on a regular canvas it kind of feels like when you're painting on linen with traditional oil paints if you know the difference between linen and uh, cotton uh, the traditional oil paints tend to stick onto linen like really grab onto the the linen canvas kind of in the same way that the water mixable is sticking on here so like I did say, we're going to be adding uh, half tones and very subtle planes. So these planes are uh, facing away from the light, so they're going to get darker. But I'm going to be very careful not to just darken where I see something dark. I do think that the photo reference is compressing the value range on our model's left eye a little bit too much giving a kind of a uh, black eye effect, which she didn't have. So uh, later on, I will come back in and add a top plane to the side of the, uh, the eye socket, essentially just lightening that value that I put in a little bit. Now we're painting in a little bit of sclera dark on the side of the eye. Remember the sclera, the white of the eye. Yesterday, um, you saw me mix up the lighter color for it, which is basically just black and white and some flesh tone, and then the darker, which is uh, black and white and some burnt umbra to create the sclera dark. And now you see all of the uh, half tones have been put in. Now you see it's not so much that has changed, just the edge quality has been refined. And now we're just softening some more of the edges beneath the, the mandible. And remember, this episode is about the, uh, you know, the usability of water mixable 
oil paint. So now you can see how I was able to achieve that kind of softening effect. It almost looks like I painted over an underpainting with this portrait, when, when in fact you know I didn't. You know that I was working on a uh, just a basic uh, white cotton canvas. So now the trick is to sharpen the edges that we want to leave sharp, such as that corner on the side of the mouth. And as you can tell, I think it looks more, uh, dare I say, classical, the way that my painting looks. If you compare the photo reference and the painting, you know, like you would compare two pictures, you can see that the one that I've created is something that looks like it's been created by human hands. You can see brush stroke. You can see, you know, a little bit of, um, I don't know, <laughs> stylization, I guess, even though I didn't force it onto the painting. It almost looks like it airs towards a more classical type of look. Maybe I made the eyes too round, uh, the nose too short. I don't know, but... It does have that kind of touch. And see how easily we're able to soften the edge with the clean and dry synthetic brush. And that's all it is, really. It's down to edge. When you're working in this kind of way, it is very time-consuming, though. I will say that. But I find that this process is much faster faster you know when you put in those simple shapes and then continue to soften the edges sharpen certain edges that you want to sharpen i find that this way is much faster and in particular ala prima is just much faster than the uh, the traditional approach so now what we're going to do is we're going to put in some more information for the hair so we have only i don't even know like six minutes left or something like that so now you're going to see uh, how i'm able to paint wet on wet even for the darker areas and as you can tell uh, the painting is not glaring as much it is glaring from where i'm sitting but it's not glaring anywhere near as bad as uh, the traditional oil paints will glare. Now remember, no one's paying me to tell you all this. I know I'm saying so many positive things about the uh, water mixable oil paints and how they handle for portrait painting. But this is coming from someone who has been working at this. At first, I didn't like water mixable oil paints. I didn't like the way they felt. And even worse, I was trying to use uh, certain mediums that are made specifically for water mixables and was treating them the same as I would for traditional oil paints. And I, it didn't work. I didn't like it. So I found something that worked for me, and I'm trying to share that experience with you. It doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, I'm trying to say that I'm a complete expert with water mixable oils or none of that. I'm trying to share this experience with you. Now, I did have some glaring on the top of the hair just because I'm using a lot more paint uh, for the hair. And another thing to point out, you know how with the traditionals I always say that the burnt umber dries super fast? It's not <laughs> with the water mixables, which is weird because water mixables are marketed to have faster drying rates. And I'm using the same brands. Like for my Burnt Umber, I have Winsor and Newton traditional, the traditional oils. And for water mixable, I have the Winsor and Newton Burnt Umber water mixable. But I find that the water mixable stays wet longer, which is kind of weird. I, I don't know. I can't really back that up, but it just feels that way. And now uh, putting in a little more ivory black into the background and some more ultramarine blue. I am pushing the background color to be a little bit cooler just because I know that that will bring out the warmth in the flesh tones. As you know, I tend to make my flesh tones, I tend to air towards the warmer side than the cooler gray side in terms of flesh tone. And I'm using um, 
this is kind of tricky here. So I'm painting another layer onto the background, right? And you see that it's it's sticking very nicely, but that is a delicate balance between how much paint to water to use. It's not straight paint and it's not very runny paint either. So it's a very delicate balance here to get the paint to stick. But hopefully you can tell, especially if you're watching this in HD, if you're watching this in 1080p, um, you know, like high resolution, you're definitely able to see, especially in the background, how these new brush strokes are sticking to the older ones very nicely. But of course, with a delicate touch, right there, you see that I'm pushing too roughly onto the corner of the canvas, which is leaving some of the uh, some of the brush strokes to show through, which is okay. It's actually an effect that I like, but you can tell. The difference between this corner here and then the corner to the right. And the hair is another edge of which I want to sharpen closer towards the top middle and soften towards the, uh, the corners, so around here. And you can even see it in the photo reference. The photograph even has it where the top middle is a little sharper than the, the edges. And now we're mixing up that color that I was talking about earlier. So we're using the, um, the mixing white, the cadmium orange, the cadmium yellow. And now I'm trying to paint a color or mix up a color that's very similar to the flesh tones, but a tad bit more pinkish orange. And there you have it right there. And so that is for the kind of, what's it called? Like rim lighting, the light behind the model. Though I am going to uh, exaggerate it a little bit more on the painting than it is on the photo reference, just because it's neat and I've never, <laughs> I've never painted a back lit. So like a double, a double lighting portrait. I've actually had requests to, to do this kind of light effect a long time ago. So here you have it, <laughs> uh, just pushing the light uh, in particular around the corners because those areas are going to be facing the light and everything else, basically everything that's in the light for us that we've been painting thus far is not facing that um, kind of warmish light in the background. And so we're just going to fill in the blank space down here and that's going to be it. So now what we're going to do is drop a signature onto this painting and I'm going to just use the burnt umber. See how nicely the paint thins out. I really like presenting you with these close-up shots just so you can see uh, the thinning out of the uh, water mixable oil paints in action. That being said, I really hope that today's episode helps you out. I hope that it provides you with some new insights into uh, how to use water mixable oil paints in particular for portrait painting. And always remember, in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity among all of us. I really do hope that you have a wonderful day, and I'll be back again with our next episode very soon.